how to drive fast. Okay, this is probably gonna be the most controversial video I'm ever gonna make, but honestly, no matter how many times as us young people are told to slow down on the road, we're still gonna be driving fast. So might as well do it safely and do it correctly. And also, if you're gonna drive fast, do it at your own risk. If you get a ticket, it's not my fault, and tickets are really a big pain in the ass to deal with, especially if you're younger than 18, because if you get more than two points on your license, your license is done. Safety first. This is boring, but stay with me here because it's really important. One. You should never play music while you're driving fast, especially when you're driving fast in the canyons. A, because it's really distracting, obviously. Two, you need to be able to hear your tires, in fact. When you're driving on the canyons, and especially if you're a new driver, when you turn really hard, you'll hear your tires. Pull your window down and listen to your tires. They'll actually make a really specific noise depending on how hard you're turning. And especially when your tires start screeching, that means you need to slow down. Two, roll your windows down about that much. And it's about halfway down and the reason why you should do halfway down is because one obviously you need to roll your windows down to hear your tires but two if you roll it all the way down one the wind's gonna blow on your face but more importantly if you do roll your car over you don't want your head going out the window or your arms flying out the window and getting yourself decapitated three tell your friend sitting next to you and whoever the heck is in the back seat to shut up it's just distracting and four don't try to be a badass and turn your esc off you're on the street, you're not on a racetrack. Maybe if you're on a racetrack and you're Ken Block and you want to do some all-wheel drive drifting, then sure. But really, there's no need for you to turn your ESC off. It's the second most important safety feature of an automobile after the seatbelt. Maybe if you're a little bit more advanced, then you can turn your traction control off because it does get in the way sometimes when you're going out of corners, it can be really, really restrictive. So turn your traction control off, but you really should never turn your ESC off. You're not going drifting, you're just going canyon driving. It's not gonna do anything. And five, get off your phone. Sometimes I see teenagers on their Snapchats going like, no, just throw your phone in the back and focus on driving. The number one reason why teenagers crash is distracted driving and do you like, do you really want to risk your life for a cool Snapchat story? No. And girls, sadly there's probably no girls that are watching this YouTube channel, but honestly, you don't need to respond to your text within the next 10 seconds after you get it. And number six doesn't really have to do anything with driving fast, because when you're sleepy, you're not gonna be driving like you're doing Tokyo Drift. But it's also really important. Me, myself, I'm a victim of an accident that I didn't really cause, but that I could have avoided if I wasn't sleepy. Long time ago, I was on the freeway, I was sleepy, I was falling asleep on the wheel, I got clipped by a driver, and honestly, after the accident, I thought about it for a while, and seriously, I could have so avoided that if I was wide awake. Some things you could do when you're sleepy is you can pull over and do some jumping jacks or go to the gas station and get some Red Bull, it really helps. Okay, now that I covered some safety, let me get to some common sense. Those of you guys who just got your license two months ago, you are not Ken Block. Don't go to a cul-de-sac with your Ford Mustang V6 and try doing figure eights. You're just not gonna work. I've had so many of my friends break their axles because they tried doing some Tokyo Drift bullshit on a cul-de-sac and then they ended up Mustanging their car. You young people, you think you're invincible. You're not. You start driving like you're fucking playing Forza Horizon 3. Once you get into an accident, you'll learn obviously, but you don't want to get into an accident. Okay, now that I covered the basics and some common sense, let me get into some of the techniques. One, for those of you who decide to drive recklessly on city streets, be super careful around intersections. Intersections are where most accidents actually, like 99% of accidents happen. People are turning left, they don't really see you, you're coming way too fast and you can get into a head-on accident and kill yourself. Or someone can make a right turn in front of you, there's so many things that can happen at an intersection. So when you're going through an intersection, go the speed limit or below the speed limit. Slow down through intersections. Also, pullouts. When you see driveways and there's a car parked in front of the driveway, the car pulling out of the driveway obviously can't see you. So either move to the left so you decrease your chance of hitting the car pulling out of the driveway, or slow down. Make sure the other guy sees you and slow down until you pass the pullout. Two, when you're doing donuts, don't do it on a cul-de-sac. Go to the racetrack, they have skid pads where it's designed for you to go do donuts on, or find a really, really big parking lot without lampposts. But be careful again, because if a police sees you doing donuts in a parking lot, your life is over. Oh, and super importantly, don't run from the cops. Especially in California and Los Angeles, you have no chance. A police helicopter can get to any point on top of Los Angeles within six minutes or less. And if you get unlucky and there's a police helicopter 30 seconds away from you, and once a police helicopter is on top of you, 
you're done. That you have no chance of going away. And three, if you only go really fast on the freeway, don't do it on the 405 or the 101 where there's a bunch of people. Once again, be careful because if you're going 25 mile an hour over speed limit, that's reckless driving. And if you're going 25 miles an hour or more over the speed limit, that's reckless driving. You can get your license pulled right there. But if you're gonna choose to do so, go find an interstate really, really far away where there's no cars, there's two lanes, and there's really no traffic around you. And if you're gonna do that, I suggest you buy a radar detector, but at the same time, with a radar detector, you're not invincible. But going 120 miles an hour through traffic is the stupidest idea. If you're merging into a lane and there's another car merging into the same lane that you're merging into from the other side, then you're gonna cause a big accident. So go find a really long stretch of freeway where there's no traffic, where you can see at least five miles ahead of you, the visibility is really good, the sun is out, it's not raining then that's a little bit more safe than doing it on the 101 freeway during rush hour traffic. Three, understeer and oversteer. If you don't know what that is, Google it. But if your car starts understeering in the canyons, a lot of the mistakes that I've seen from people crashing that are inexperienced is once their car starts understeering, most inexperienced drivers will have a tendency to turn the wheel even more, losing even more traction. Your car will not turn harder. Instead, it will go straight and you'll hit the wall. So that's really, really important. If your car starts understeering, apply a little bit of brake so that the weight distribution is on the front wheels and ease out to turn a little bit and slow down instead of turning the wheel as hard as you can and slamming on the brakes because that's not gonna do anything except make you go straight and off the cliff. And second, oversteer. Your car shouldn't be oversteering, first of all, because I told you not to turn your ESC off. But if you do decide to do so and your car starts oversteering, and you're an inexperienced driver, you don't know how to control a drift properly, then I'm sorry, your life is probably over and there's nothing I can tell you about that. Four, double laning. Double laning is where people in the canyons on a two lane road where they go into the opposite side of traffic to maintain their lines. Do not do it during the daytime because you have no chance of seeing the car coming from the other side. But at nighttime, you can at least see the headlights from the oncoming traffic, but at the same time, if their headlights are broken, then you're getting into a 100 mile an hour head-on collision. Five. Don't be a dick. When you're on a residential street, that's not a fucking racetrack. There are people living there, people who want to sleep and watch TV and relax. When you have a loud car, don't drive that car 75 miles an hour down a residential street. Even me as a car person, I think it's annoying when people drive 14,000 miles an hour up my street in a straight pipe Civics. It's just annoying. Even if you have a nice sounding car, I don't care. It's annoying. I want to sleep. Six. One cool thing someone told me was actually a Porsche Le Mans championship racing driver. A while ago, he told me to always look at the car in front of the car that's in front of you. Because if you think about it, the car in front of you is going to react to the car that's in front of that car. So if you start paying attention to the car that's two cars ahead of you, then that can actually anticipate a lot more things that could happen on the road and give you a little bit more time to react. I use that technique every single day when I'm driving in traffic on the highway, all the way to when I'm racing people on the racetrack. Seven, know the limits of your car. If you're driving a Lamborghini Huracan, that car can brake way harder, turn way faster, and accelerate way harder. But if you're in cars that are a lot less capable, like a CLA 250 or an Audi A3, then don't be tailgating cars that are a lot more capable than your car, or don't be tailgating them when you're on the road. Because if that car that's a lot more capable than yours, for some reason has to brake really hard, then you're just gonna end up rear-ending them because your car can't brake hard enough. So just keep that in mind. Even if you're driving a McLaren P1, that does not necessarily give you the authority to drive even faster and start tailgating people. Eight, control your ego. When I was an inexperienced driver, and I tried to follow people that are a lot more experienced than me in the canyons, they're gonna know all the advanced techniques like trail braking, left foot braking, and they're just gonna drive and handle the car a lot better than you, and they're gonna be able to go a lot faster than you as an inexperienced driver. So if you know that, then go at your own pace. I'm gonna repeat that, go at your own pace. Just because the car in front of you goes faster than what you're used to going, doesn't mean you have to be on their ass the whole time. If there's faster people behind you in the canyons, let them pass. I made a whole video on that. But if the car in front of you is going faster than what you feel comfortable with, then don't try to be egotistical. And really, as young people, I know that's really hard to control. Do you really wanna let ego kill you? And really, the most important thing is know the road. There's a really famous video online of a BMW M3 following another BMW M3 to some really sketchy canyons. And it looks like the driver is braking into the corner at a relatively reasonable pace, but all of a sudden, without warning, the corner steepens up a lot more than the BMW driver understeers and goes off the cliff. And that BMW driver would have saved himself if he familiarized himself with the road before he drove balls out. If you can't comprehend 
every single thing I just said in this video, you should not be driving fast. I know this is some pretty basic stuff for those who are a little bit more experienced. So later on, I'm gonna make a more advanced how to drive video. So guys, thanks for watching. Please be careful on the road, slow down, don't be a dumbass. And traffic tickets are the biggest pain in the ass to take care of. So you wanna avoid those at all costs. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.